Hello, and welcome to Neologicon. In this video, adapted from Brooks Landon's Building Great Sentences, Exploring the Writer's Craft, I will be further covering cumulative sentences in depth, focusing this time on how to craft them syntagmatically. In his lectures, Professor Landon identifies 10 methods of building cumulative sentences, each one helping to create new varying phrases. The first method involves a verbal, which is a verb ending in either ing, denoting a present action, ed, a past action, or en, an advancement. These types of cumulative sentences allow the reader to understand why the subject did something. The cheetah chased after the gazelle, sprinting. The cheetah then stopped running, fatigued under the blazing sun. The cheetah gave up, beaten by the superior endurance of its prey. One may also use a verb followed by an adverb, a method that explains a cause and its effect. Remember, too, that the modifier can come in the initial or the final position. Yelling incessantly, the boy felt his throat tightening. The runner stopped, panting heavily. As soon as the teacher entered the class, the student straightened up, watching intently. A third option is to take the subject or object of the base clause and add detail to it explaining more about the components of the clause. The homework was passed out amongst the students, the students looking at it with horror. The girl poured milk into her bowl, the milk spilling all over the place. A cow ate some grass, the grass green and fresh. Fourthly, an article followed by an adjective followed by the subject or object can, like the previous method, describe who's doing what and what something's being done to. The boy frowned at his grade, the lowly grade representing failure. The girl pet her horse, a hazel-colored horse. Together, the friends went on an adventure, the inseparable friends enjoying every moment of it. An article, adjective, noun, and prepositional phrase provide the setting of a sentence, and it helps create imagery for the reader. Angrily, a brick was thrown through the window, the translucent pane outside its frame. The front door was slammed, a loud thud all around the house. Once the whistle went off, the horses raced, an exciting course circling the town. The sixth option consists of an article, an appositive, which is used to give further and optional information about the subject, and a noun or verb. Using this method allows for the writer to connect ideas, giving the reader a comparison, a new perspective. The apple fell from the tree, a shiny red fruit. Consequently, Newton discovered gravity, a breakthrough into new ideas. An impact of large proportions, the universal law of gravity became accepted. When using method 7, a possessive pronoun, and the subject, object, or clause, one can describe who is doing the object, what something is being done to, or the sentence in its entirety, thereby creating a this because of that scenario. The woman found a coin on the ground, its golden color catching her eye. The woman found a coin on the ground, her eye catching the golden color. The woman found a coin on the ground, its effect being that she gained an extra cent. Method 8 involves an article and an adverb which, when paired together, give a statement concerning what has just happened in the sentence. One may also use an adverb by itself, emphasizing how something was done, often providing more context. The thief crouched down, hesitantly. After robbing the old woman, the thief ran away, a sickly act. Honorably, the police officer caught the thief in an ambuscade. After finishing an independent clause, a writer can get away with including somewhat random information, but one should be wary, as it should have some relevance. Writing about the setting, for example, even if the sentence does not require it, will give us more detail, and writers are always looking for detail. The hunter tiptoed through the forest, the moon bright and luminous that evening. A particularly cold morning, the kids went out to ice skate. The couple went out to dinner their car parked several blocks away. Lastly, method 10 utilizes either a simile, a comparison using like or as, or a metaphor, a 
comparison between two unlike things. The two classic forms of figurative language, the metaphor and the simile can do what literal language cannot, supplying an active image that will activate the reader's imagination. This method is a great way to grab a reader's attention, but it should not be overused since it will get repetitive and thus predictable. Radiant like the sun, the girl smiled. Usain Bolt sprinted toward the finish line, fast as the wind. Like a bull in a china shop, the dog wrecked the dining room. So, now that you have 10 methods to build cumulative sentences, you can now go out and craft some new, longer sentences that will give the reader more detail.